Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you guys like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So the Republicans, mainly the rhinos in the Texas State House, have voted to impeach the most solid statewide official in the state of Texas, the Attorney General Ken Paxton. He is an America First fighter. He is great on all of the issues. He gets a lot done here in Texas, and now... He has been impeached in the House, waiting trial uh, in the state Senate. But even so, it was not even particularly close. You look at this, and he was impeached by a margin of 121 to 23. And this is Texas. This is a state where you have a state House that is majority Republican. And even then, over two-thirds or so of Republicans in the state of Texas decided to impeach Attorney General Ken Paxton. And it's sad. And what are they impeaching him over? Things like potential bribery and things like corruption, they say. Very vague statements. But these are things that everybody knew about before, by the way. The voters knew about it before. He faced a primary challenge against George P. Bush, of all people. And now they want to potentially appoint George P. Bush to the AG slot if Paxton does actually get convicted in the state of Texas for the trial in the Senate. But now, looking at this, he's beloved in this state, and this is something that people don't understand. The voters knew about these things, and they were okay with it. They were fine because these are allegations and every single politician has some sort of a skeleton in their closet. For the most part, that's how they get to where they're at in their career. I'm not saying I condone corruption, but if you have somebody that's very solid, somebody that's beloved, that has, you know, a little bit of corruption here and there, somebody like Huey Long, for example, like he was notoriously corrupt, but that he used the corruption to benefit the people, and he was very popular. He was seen as a populist in Louisiana, whether you agree with him on like economics or not, doesn't really matter. He was seen as a strong leader, and even people on the right tend to admire many elements of Huey Long's leadership. Leadership. Ken Paxton, if anything, you want to say he follows that playbook. And that is true. And the call does not go the other way. They're not going to sit there and impeach somebody who has done far worse than Ken Paxton if they happen to be a rhino. They're just not. They'll cover it up. They'll just gloss it over. Maybe they'll have that person retire, and then they'll get them in some cushy lobbying job where they have even more influence and make even more money and influence policy at a greater level. And that's how these things work. Again, Ken Paxton is a fighter. They don't like that. You look at what Ken Paxton does. He's very good on the issues. We could talk about all the things he's done, but I think it's important to understand how beloved he is because they spent a lot of money trying to defeat him in the primary. And Ken Paxton got a greater share of the vote in the primary runoff than even Greg Abbott got uh, in his primary where he faced several challengers. But you want to look at this, Ken Paxton with 68% of the vote. George P. Bush, you talk about Texas GOP being more of a Bush party. And even though you have some leadership in the state house that is awful, I mean, the state party as a whole and the voters in the state, even in some of these suburbs, they voted more for Paxton than the state at large voted for Ken Paxton. You see this right here. It's not the Bush party anymore. It's the party of Paxton, the party of the more America first conservatives. And not only that, they're capable of winning the general election because Paxton had all these corruption scandals. Democrats thought they'd have a shot in this race. Paxton won by 10 points. And that's with a libertarian taking away 3% of the vote. And he even outperformed Greg Abbott in a lot of these suburbs, uh, so to speak, surrounding Houston, performed in line with him pretty much in the Dallas area. I think the reason why he actually underperformed was because of Garza's strength downstate, where you kind of had that effect of these uh, blue-collar Hispanic Tejano voters that swung heavily right in 2020, just not showing up in high enough numbers because it was a midterm year. So Ken Paxton is somebody who is loved by the people in the state of Texas, even though they had these corruption scandals, so to speak, front and center, it doesn't matter. He ended up winning by roughly 10 percentage points. If you had it as a two-way race, Libertarian was not in the mix. He probably would have won it by around 12 points or so, which is more than what Greg Abbott defeated Beta 
O'Rourke, by the way. So that's important to take note as well because he's popular. They're trying to oust somebody who's popular. And what has he done that's good exactly? Well, uh, he's been there for a while. He was there in the Obama administration opposing him uh, on his executive orders on immigration. He did the same for Biden. He defended Trump's executive orders on immigration. He's very tough on the border. Uh, One of the toughest uh, statewide, if not the toughest statewide politician in Texas on the border or even uh, the toughest statewide politician in a border state on the border. He defended Texas in terms of redistricting, helping have more Republican seats in Congress. He did everything in his power to oppose COVID mandates back when that was a thing. He's worked to try and ban puberty blockers for minors. He's trying to actually put you know lawsuits forth to overturn Obergefell. He's great in election integrity. In fact, that one infamous Texas lawsuit was Ken Paxton's. He's very good on the Second Amendment, trying to do everything he can to bring God back into the public square and reinstitute some form of prayer in school. So he's a fighter. He's somebody that understands the problems with our society, and he's working to rectify them as much as possible using power. And he has a very high approval rating. As a result, people love him. He won big in November. He only underperformed Abbott by one with a large third party and plenty of corruption scandals. And this is true. But the rhinos are willing to throw him under the bus. Why don't they throw the Democrats under the bus? How many Democrats have been impeached? Like, how many people in general have been impeached in Texas in history? Two, and that was like some guy 50 years ago and some guy over 100 years ago. And those were for like legitimate things and stuff. But that's beside the point. What we do know is there have been so many corrupt politicians on the other side that we never do anything about. We never try to get them removed from their committees even. We never try to impeach them or remove them from office. They try to remove George Santos because he like lied about his past or whatever. But even so, like why are they trying to remove somebody who is the most solid congressman or one of them on the issues in terms of voting record when they could easily try to go after people on the other side, try to remove AOC. She has corruption scandals. They don't talk about that. Ilan Omar allegedly uh, committing immigration fraud by marrying her brother. Nobody wants to talk about that, but they want to talk about people like Ken Paxton, people on the right uh, who may have some very remedial skeletons in their closet, and they're trying to remove them from office. And you don't see really anybody talking about this. I'll give Ted Cruz credit because he called it out. Um, and you saw Donald Trump, he called it out as he should have. I haven't heard word from any of the other people running for president, including Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. He's been very quiet on this. Uh, And Trump and Cruz came to his defense, uh, calling it a travesty, saying the AG's legal trouble should be left to the courts. I think it should be left up to the people of Texas. They already knew about these things, and look what happened. So why are they doing this exactly? Why? Why? It's because he calls out the rhinos. You have a drunk moron whose name is Dade Phelan, who Paxton called for to resign because he was being a drunk moron on the House floor, and everybody agreed. People were laughing about it uh, in Texas media. They were laughing about it nationwide, and he didn't happen to like that. So what did he do? Oh, he tried to go out there and impeach Paxton and actually was able to do so successfully. Now, this guy is somebody who is a total rhino. You have plenty of rhinos in the Texas State House. Phelan is like their leader, and this is a problem. The state Senate, uh, will Paxton actually get thrown out? It's very possible given the House vote. Paxton says he's confident that he is not going to be removed from office, but we will have to see. Either way, it is just very disturbing. But this guy, Dade Phelan, will roll the clip right here. Mr. Ramey sends up an amendment to the amendment. The amendment to the amendment is separate of the authors. Is there objection to the option of the amendment? A record of voters been requested by Mr. Middleton. The clerk will ring the bell. Show Mr. Hunter voting aye, Mr. Rennie voting aye. Show Ms. Johnson Harris voting aye. Mr. Hunter voting aye. Have all members voted. There will be 90 ayes and 40 nays. The amendment to the amendment is adopted. The chair recognizes Mr. Rainey to close on the amendment as amended. 
Yeah, exactly. This is who is determining who can be in power and who cannot be in power. And every single person that's going along with this charade, they need to be primaried out. I'd like for Trump to come forward and say that if you're in the state Senate and you vote to impeach and remove, because he's already been impeached, he'd be voting to remove uh, Paxton from his post, then they need to be primaried out pronto. That's the way this thing needs to work because they're going after this guy who's been very solid on all of these issues. He's beloved by the state of Texas, but even then, that's not enough for these people. If you don't belong to their rhino club, it's not about a luctability or whatever because we already saw that get narrative get debunked in the state of Texas. When you have somebody who is a member of a state party with an apparatus that is competent, I'm not talking about these rhino state representatives, but an apparatus that's competent, you have team players, in the turnout game uh, in the state of Texas. They do a good job, and they got Paxton across the finish line despite him being far to the right of even Trump on a lot of issues. You talk about a luctability. Oh, it doesn't matter. He was to the right of Trump on a lot of things even, and he has all these scandals. But hey, he won by 10 in Texas with a massive effort by the left and the right to try and oust him. So it kind of shows you how the turnout game really matters and does go a long way. He even was able to destroy uh, George P. Bush, which is probably the best Bush overall, but still the best Bush isn't really something to brag about. And now they're probably going to try to replace him with George P. Bush, replace him with another Bush to resurrect his dying career. That's the son of Jeb, by the way. Yeah, not a good look, not a good move. And you look at these people who are in power, it's like crazy. You know, you have an alleged drunk moron who is controlling the levers of power in the Texas State House that doesn't reflect the will of the people, whether you talk about the Republican primary voters in the state or you just talk about the voters in the state at large. And again, Phelan is somebody who has promoted Democrats in the state of Texas to lead committees despite them not having a majority. He has given and ceded so much power to the opposition in the state of Texas. But when it comes to protecting somebody who is your best statewide officer and everyone knew about all these allegations and nobody cared because they like him and they realize that it's all a likely bunk and a witch hunt because he's effective and they try to bring him down because he's effective. Yeah, this guy, no, he'd rather waste his time trying to impeach the most solid statewide official you have in Texas while promoting the opposition that seeks to do harm not just to the state of Texas, but to the nation as a whole, and give them the power uh, on important issues and have them dictate the conversation, despite that not being what the voters in the state of Texas want. So no, we don't need Paxton to go. We need Phelan to go. Let's pray that Paxton somehow survives the trial in the state Senate. It is possible. We'll see. He's confident. I'm not as confident because we know how these things go, but still, we got to defend him, and hopefully, maybe he'll be Trump's AG if Trump gets in there in 2025, because he's that good. He's that solid. We need Ken Paxton. He cannot go away. He is just one of the best AGs we've seen, arguably, in our lifetimes, and they're trying to take him down over really nothing that any voter cared about. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.